world's oceans, vast and expansive, cover the majority of the Earth's surface and contain 97% of the planet's water. We can see bodies of water which expand beyond the horizon, but what lies beneath is where we discover the truly spectacular. Tropical coral reefs and California rocky reefs are specialized ecosystems teeming with life and diversity. And as we continue to explore the oceans, we discover how breathtaking our reefs really are and that they need to be taken care of. What is the future of our reefs? Will they be here for our grandchildren to enjoy? Coral reefs, found in all tropical seas, are the largest living structures on Earth and are visible from outer space. They are home to the highest biodiversity in the ocean. Known as the rainforests of the sea, coral reefs occupy less than 1% of the ocean floor, an area about half the size of California. Temperate and tropical reefs provide a home for as much as 25% of the world's marine species. To put this into perspective, coral reefs support more species per unit area than any other marine environment on the planet. Estimates of the total number of reef species range between 1 and 9 million. California's rocky reefs are very different from coral reefs, but no less fascinating. California waters are much colder and richer in nutrients than tropical waters, supporting a high abundance of fish, and many of which are important for local fisheries. The giant kelp can grow up to a foot and a half a day and up to 150 feet long. Within the kelp forest, a myriad of fishes, invertebrates, algae, and other organisms find home and shelter from predators. Everyone dreams about taking a vacation on the white sand beaches of a tropical island. But few people lying on the beach in the Bahamas or Hawaii realize that the sand is made from the ground up skeletons of corals. In fact, not only is the beach sand derived from corals, but many low lying islands such as the Maldives and Bonaire are actually fossil coral reefs that have been exposed above sea level. More than 100 countries earn a combined $5 million each year from coral reef tourism. For some small island nations such as Balao, the coral reefs are so important for dive tourism that the country has placed most of the reefs under strict protection in order to protect their economy. Every human being benefits in one way or another from coral reefs, but some live closer to the reefs than others. Nearly one billion people live within 100 kilometers of a coral reef and directly benefit from them, especially as a food source. In developing countries, coral reefs contribute about one quarter of the total fish catch. Like all tropical coral reefs, California's rocky reefs are a playground for surfers, while protecting coastal structures from millions of dollars in damage from storm waves. When large waves break in, shoaling waters above the reefs, they lose much of their energy before they reach the shore. The perfect wave. Because of the nutrient-rich water in California, the rocky reefs are highly productive, and in Southern California alone, around 91,000 tons of fish are caught each year by commercial fishermen, helping to make California's ocean-related activities a multi-billion dollar industry. Sadly, both coral reefs and California rocky reef ecosystems are facing serious problems caused mainly by human activities. The main threats are overfishing, global warming, ocean acidification, and pollution, including sedimentation. Unfortunately, some 80% of the world's fisheries are considered to be overfished. The demand for seafood has never been greater. Fishing vessels, navigation equipment and gear, transportation and refrigeration have improved a lot over the past 30 years. We are simply eating wild-caught fish and shellfish faster than they can reproduce. One thing I'd like to talk about is, you know, we take, we take everything good out of the ocean. Lobsters, fish, clam, everything. Coral reefs are finely balanced ecosystems. It turns out that overfishing creates an imbalance that can lead to damage and even the death of the reef. Coral reefs in Haiti and Jamaica have followed this path. 
and are now dominated by dead coral, algae, and sponges, a process one scientist calls the slippery slope to slime. Another result of overfishing is declining fish catch and a decrease in the number of big fish. Across the border in Baja, California, fishermen are experiencing these consequences firsthand as the size of grouper and their numbers have dwindled. Ahorita se encuentra dos, tres en el día, son muchas, casi, casi, pues, se ha extinguido completamente la especie. Entonces las tallas han, han disminuido, o sea, antes las poblaciones eran generalmente esos tamaños, o sea, últimamente he visto cabrillas solamente entre 60, 80 centímetros, ¿sí? cabrillas que ya no están llegando a, a su madurez. Yo le he visto un océano que se está acabando. ¿Por qué? Porque lo primordial, lo primordial se está acabando. As fish populations on coral reefs decline, desperate fishermen in many countries resort to destructive but highly efficient fishing practices, such as blast fishing. Unfortunately, like explosives, cyanide kills many other organisms, including the corals. As in tropical ecosystems, the demand for California seafood far exceeds the supply, and some species, such as abalone and sea bass, have faced a dramatic decline. I wish we knew then what we know now about how fast a population of fish and other sea animals can disappear when it's overfished. And uh, we were pretty oblivious back then to, to it. We thought there was a never-ending supply. Just like on coral reefs, overfishing in California can destabilize rocky reef ecosystems. The earths and predators are now gone. The, the sea otters are gone from Southern California. The sheephead have dwindled in, in their population, and so have the lobsters. So there's an overabundance of, of um, sea urchins, which are eating away the kelp forest, which eliminates part of the cycle of life. Like overfishing, solving the global warming problem requires everyone's cooperation. Since 1998, rapid increases in the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases have already led to a series of global coral bleaching events that killed about 15% of the world's coral reefs. A less publicized effect of increased atmospheric carbon dioxide is ocean acidification. More carbon dioxide in the air means more dissolved in seawater pushing the seawater to become more acidic. Researchers predict that within 20 years, the ocean will be too acidic for many organisms like corals to create their skeletons. Another threat to reefs is coastal development. Construction of ports, channels, harbors, and housing developments can directly damage both coral reefs and California rocky reefs. With the worldwide coastal population expected to double within 40 years, near-shore coral reefs and rocky reefs could be facing increased impacts. Along with development, various forms of pollution, such as sewage, industrial chemicals, oil, nuclear, and sediment, impact reef species differently. For example, oil from spills, leaks in rigs and pipelines, or from ship discharge can have both short-term and chronic impacts. Pollution from human activities is the most concerning. Solid waste, such as fishing lines, plastic soda holders, and plastic bags may harm marine life. Reef Check began with a simple goal in 1996. We wanted to get a representative sample of the world's coral reefs. And there weren't really enough scientists to do that, so we needed to enlist the help of the scientists to train volunteer scuba divers all over the world and put them to work checking on the health of the world's reefs. The results of that first global survey of coral reefs, some 350 reefs in 31 countries, were simple and shocking. Most high-value fish and shellfish were simply missing from most reefs. Even the best reefs were often in poor health. On the basis of these findings, ReefCheck announced the global coral reef crisis, due primarily to overfishing. 
Since it began, ReefCheck has expanded to become an award-winning international non-profit organization with offices in over 10 countries and volunteer teams in more than 90. Over 2,000 divers volunteer for ReefCheck. Furthermore, ReefCheck's California program was launched in 2005 and has been successful, expanding to monitor more than 80 sites from border to border. ReefCheck has been helping communities to improve the health of their reefs in California and in tropical coral reef countries throughout the world through a grassroots, volunteer-driven approach. ReefCheck promotes change through education, research, and conservation. ReefCheck is all over the world, helping to protect reefs and people. ReefCheck's core program is to educate the public about the value of the reefs, threats to their health, and to involve them in direct action through reef monitoring and direct conservation activities. ReefCheck offers a multi-level education program for kids and adults to become citizen scientists. The data collected by trained citizen scientists can then be used to help determine how to better manage the reefs that have been surveyed. In many countries, from Jamaica to Brunei, ReefCheck has been adopted as a standard monitoring program by the government agencies responsible for managing coral reefs. As a result, many decisions regarding how to sustainably manage coral reefs are now based in part on ReefCheck data. Since ReefCheck began in 1997, it is now the only long-term standardized database on reef health available. ReefCheck works in some of the poorest countries in the world, such as Haiti, where coral reef management has not been a government priority. Starting in 2010, we began a training program for university students to become ReefCheck divers, so that Haiti could, for the first time, have its own local monitoring teams. Many university students are passionate about their desire to be trained as reef check divers. Hi, I'm Alexandra. I'm studying architectural engineering at Sleep University. I'm from Haiti. Even though Haiti is an island, I've never had the chance to learn how to swim well, to snorkel, and to scuba dive. But with reef check, everything has changed. I can realize my dream while I'll be learning more about marine life. It is also a great opportunity to get involved in helping Haiti's school reef. Thank you, Reef Check. A typical Reef Check survey is conducted within a matter of hours, quickly providing information to scientists who analyze and verify the data for accuracy and trends. Numerous studies and reports by independent scientists, such as Reefs at Risk Revisited, have used Reef Check data to accurately determine the condition of reefs. Regardless of the country, ReefCheck seeks both economically and ecologically sustainable solutions to reef problems. In the Dominican Republic, ReefCheck has been instrumental in reviving La Caleta National Marine Park through their education of the community and how to better manage the park. Pero nosotros todos los pecadores esperamos que para nuestros hijos la cosa sea mucho más fácil. Pero dentro del programa de Richard, que sería la gran felicidad para nuestra playa y para nuestros recursos naturales. With over 500 Reef Check California divers from all walks of life, Reef Check California divers have begun to monitor the performance of the MPAs, and we are training more citizen scientists in order to build a larger constituency of ocean supporters. For us to be able to even approach developing ma management plans for all of our species. We need to have the help of collaboration of, of people outside of the department. And um, certainly ReefCheck has, has been very important to the department as far as, as, as being one of our major collaborators. I'm John Manos. I'm a carpenter. Just the fact that everything, that, all the surveys that I do goes into the database. Uh, my name's Catherine. Um, I'm an ocean uh, uh, lawyer. I like the people I meet. I've met all kinds of really terrific people from all different walks of life. Hey, my name's Kevin Sullivan. Professionally, I work as an engineer in the aerospace uh, industry. It really is a lot of fun. The people involved with Reef Check are really wonderful people. My name's Brad Schachter, 16 years old, I've got a thousand in high school. Everything. I like the idea that we're saving the reef. I mean, it's great. 
Why Reef Check? Coral reefs and California Rocky Reefs deserve more attention and better care. It is not acceptable that we have already lost some 20% of a global genetic heritage that has taken 250 million years to create. How many potential anti-cancer or antimicrobial drugs will be lost if we let coral reefs continue to die? In a world dominated by global problems, there must be global solutions. All of these problems are caused by us. And so we are the ones who need to solve them. ReefCheck has pioneered reef solutions that operate at local, regional, and international levels. Our specialized training, research, and analytical methods have provided solutions in diverse locations around the world. We advise governments on how to set up national monitoring and marine management programs, training and facilitating government agencies to recognize and solve reef issues. ReefCheck is global. ReefCheck is diverse. Our programs are supported by companies such as Body Glove and Quicksilver. We are the agents of change, promoting it from the ground up by educating far and wide and by educating the leaders of tomorrow. ReefCheck is aiming to change the world one person at a time and one reef at a time to help us save our reefs for future generations. We are ReefCheck. Our teams all over the globe have a passion to protect their reefs, and it shows. <laughs>